بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم My name is Asad Yaqub and I am from Lahore, Pakistan and I teach IELTS here in Lahore. I welcome you all to the last video of this series of IELTS listening. If you did not watch my previous videos, there are seven videos, seven tests of IELTS listening. You must watch that. This is the eighth test. This is the eighth one, right? So you should, before watching this video, if you did not see other videos, go back and see those videos as well. Now, this is again going to be a current test. All these eight tests are the current tests and nowadays in IELTS, they are giving these type of questions. That's why you must go through these eight tests. It's quite important. Here we've got uh, no more than two words. First, we've got uh, notes completion with no more than two words. After that, there is a plan of learning resource center ground floor. So they've got a learning resource center and they have a plan of that and then we've got some questions. So I'll explain that to you as well. After that, we've got uh, one word only. This is latest by the way. This is really latest. One word only. Complete the table below. It's table completion type of questions. And if we go ahead, next we've got this. Choose seven answers from the box and write the correct letter. Now you got to choose the answers from here and write what is the technique for this. I'm going to explain that to you as well. And then we've got again table completion, one word only. And section four is also a notes completion type of questions with one word. Now we go to the test. Uh, we go to the test and I'm going to read all the questions and I'm going to tell you how to read the questions and then afterwards I'll play the audio. You got to listen to the audio and write the answers down on an answer sheet or on a piece of paper. You can just uh, on uh, in a notebook you can write 40 numbers from 1 to 40 and in front of each number you can write your answer and at the end you can check your answers as well. I mean on any blank sheet you can write 1 to 20 here and then 21 to 40 here and then write the answers down at the end you can match this paper of yours with the answer sheet and then you can see how many answers are correct and then I'll tell you what is your band score. Ready? Let's take a start. Okay, now let's take a start with this fresh test. We've got no more than two words and or a number. So no more than two words and means plus a number or means only a number, nothing else. Uh, the name of the manager is Kathy. So this is already given. Activities, programs involving volunteers. Monday evenings, computer training. Training needed in how to pro uh, produce. Now training needed in how to produce what? What is it that you got to produce? It's not more than two words. No more than two words. Tuesday afternoon singing. Okay, I love singing. The home has a dash and someone to play it. The home has a dash. A means there is some singular noun and someone to play it. Play it means can be a musical instrument. So Tuesday afternoon is for singing and the home has a piano and someone to play it or something like that. Thursday mornings, growing plants, growing vegetables, growing something. So that will be told in the audio. Uh, the home doesn't have, all right, it's basically a large retirement home, all right, now we understand. The home doesn't have many, for many they can use the word like several, various, lot of, for gardening. The home doesn't have many dash for gardening. Now that thing has got the link with gardening and it's a plural noun. I told you for many they can use the word uh, several, various, lot of and all that. Once a month, meeting for volunteers and staff, interview, go in on dash anytime. Go in on, on what? Anytime. So again, when you listen to the audio, you'll get to know. Interview with assistant called. Called means it's the assistant, name of the assistant or something related to that assistant. Interview with, it, uh, yeah, it can be the type of interview or the name of the interview, right? Or it can be something only relevant with assistant. Address of home, dash road. Dash road means it's the name of the road. They might spell it 73 
orchard, road and all that. Open house days, agree to help on preposition, help on what? So you got to write it here and you can find agree to help on, will show visitors where to, where to means sort of place or location. I don't know the answers at all. So we'll show visitors where to. Possibility of talking to a dash reporter. So it's a kind of reporter, right? It can be the kind or type. So possibility of talking to a news reporter, talking to a TV reporter, talking to a whatever, right? Now let's go on. Okay, we've got a map. Label the plan below. It's a plan. Write the correct letter A to H. Now, uh, at present, they are giving this type of plans. So, label the plan below. Write the correct letters A to H next to questions 11 to 15. The same method you got to use. Car park is given. Entrance is here. Study area is here. And stairs are here. So, the audio will start from here. That's the starting point. Okay. That is going to be the starting point and I told you newspapers, uh, I mean you got to put one finger over here and one pencil over here. Pencil will move, this will come down, down, down and down, right? So newspapers, computers, photocopier, cafe, sports book. So you got to see when the audio starts from here. If they say you need to go straight ahead until you reach the end. The newspapers are next to the wall. It means newspaper is A. Now do not come back over here to write A. This is not the right technique. Instead of that, you should write number 11 over here. Now for computers, if they take you somewhere and they take you here and this is computers. Now instead of coming back here and writing E, which will take your time and divert your attention, don't do that. Over here, you should write 12. And at the end, when they give you time to write the answers or the time to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, even there you can do this as well. Next, photocopier, cafe, sports books and all that. And you can move the pencil, say go straight ahead, then take a right turn and something like that. Or you can just move a pencil like that. Okay, it's not tough. Now, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, complete the table below. Now we've got table one word only. So just one word, no number at all. New staff responsibilities. Okay, name, new responsibilities. So these are the names. Now audio will go step by step. Jenny Reed, Phil, Pen Shirts, uh, Tom Salisbury, Saeed Akhtar. Okay, it can be Pakistani or Indian, Saeed Akhtar. And Shilpa, oh Indian Shilpa, okay. If somebody's name is Saeed Akhtar or Shilpa, you can just go down and write in the comment, my name is Shilpa or my name is Saeed Akhtar. All right, now new responsibilities, Jenny Reed, buying dash for the center. Now it is a sort of equipment or thing which they have to buy for the center, one word only. Fill pen shirts, it sounds like pent shirt, pen, pen shirts. Help with writing dash for courses. Now he's going to help with writing assignment for courses, writing handouts for courses or writing something for courses. Then Tom Salisbury, just read it, Tom, Jenny, Phil. Information on topics related to the, now related to, for related to they might use the word topics about or any other word related to the dash. Okay, one word only. Say, doctor, finding a dash. He's got to find. For find, they might use the word look for, search, or any other word like that. Okay, finding a dash. A means singular. Shilpa Desai, help with. Now, for help, they might use the word assist, right? Assistance and all that. So, you can see what it is going to be in the audio. Let's go on. The next one is... What helped Steward with each of the following stages in making his training film or museum for museum employees? Now, what helped Steward out of these things? What helped Steward? And then following stages, there are the stages in marking his training film for museum employees. 
choose seven answers from the box because there are seven questions. Now finding a location, advice from friends, information, being allowed extra time, meeting a professional filmmaker, a professional filmmaker, good weather conditions, you can underline that or if it is short then you don't need to underline, getting a better computer, support of manager and help from a family member, work on a previous assignment. Now the most important thing is you need to just start from here because the audio will follow this pattern. Stages in making the training film for museum employees. Finding location. Now audio is here, finding location and you are moving. Right and then you start with computer, weather, professional filmmaker, allowed extra time and all that. And, and again I would say one more thing because there are seven, choose seven answers from the box. So don't come back to write your answer here. Instead of that, write question number here. Now for example, for D, if you find question number 21, write 21 and then move on, right? And move on like this. Don't move on like this. That's not appropriate. You got to move on like this because this is how you can see all the sentence. This is how my eyes will only focus the first word, but when I put the pen here, my eyes focus all three words. My eyes focus all three words. This is a fantastic technique I have just discovered. So for instance, for deciding on equipment, if this is the answer, you should write 22 here, right? If for, for example, writing the script, it's information on a website, so you should write 23 and at the end you can transfer like 23 is B, so 23 B, 21 is D, 21 D, 22 is G, 22 G. Clear? This is how your attention will not be diverted. Okay guys, complete the notes below, write one word only, again one word. Now, Steward's work placement benefits to the Central Museum Association, okay? Work placement. Now benefits to the Central Museum Association, they are going to talk about it. His understanding of the association's dash. Now for apostrophe S, they might use of or anything else like that. His understanding of associations, companions, associations, staff or staff of the association. Association is with capital A, so they will not replace it. Reduction in expense, okay. Increased cooperation between dash. Now see answer is one word only. Between staff, between employees and remember the answer is going to be plural. Because between and then we've got plural. Between staff, between members, between clients, between whatever. So this is going to be plural answer. Whatever comes in the audio with S, relevant to that will be your answer continuous dash which led to a better product. Now continuous effort and this thing actually led to a better product. Now this is linked with this right and it led to a better product. So you got to see continuous what? For continuous they might use the word un, uh, untiring. No, they might use the word uh, for continuous they can use the word going on without stopping right and all that. There was another word in my mind but it's skipped. So continuous effort oh yeah non-stop, non-stop something and all that and then the ideas and then there is no question. Now let's go on. We've got the last section here. One word only. This is the latest test. One word only, two words and all that. New Caledonian crows and the use of tools. So it's all about Caledonian crows. Ka, ka, ka and the use of tools. Examples of animals using tools. Now some chimpanzees use stones to break nuts. Okay. Betty, New Caledonian crow. It's the name of the crow. Made a dash out of wire. Made a dash. Now it's, it can be a tool or something made a dash out of wire to move a bucket of food right so it's going to be something next is Barney and all that there's no question New Zealand and Oxford experiment three stages crows needed to move a now crows needed to move a something in order to reach a short stick there is something they need to move in order to reach a short stick so what is it what is it that they want to move 
budge or any other word and then use the short stick and all that oxford research crows now you don't need to read afterwards okay crows used sticks to investigate whether there was any dash from an object now crows used sticks to investigate whether there was any something from an object so what is that any you can find it in the audio i mean there is no clue next we've got research was inspired barney used a stick to investigate a snake made of made of means material and usually snakes are made of rubber plastic or any other material so the answer is material a uh, pierre used a stick to investigate a uh, investigate inspect and all that investigate what and pierre is the word here barney is the word here barney is the nickname of my son as well i call him barney boy okay conclusions and uh, that's the favorite character of fred flintstone my favorite cartoon there was a character barney conclusions of above research ability to plan unclear whether this is evidence of birds dash apostrophe s so it it's going to be of birds or birds dash there is something which is related to so they were unclear whether this is evidence of the birds what or dash of the bird for evidence they might use the word proof and all that next is exeter and oxford research in new caledonia well i don't know how to pronounce this exeter or exeter exeter scientists have attached very small cameras to birds now it's basically the body part of a bird birds dash means it's the body part or part of body of body part of bird it can be anything attached very small cameras to birds neck birds head birds whatever right food in the form of beetle larva provides plenty of plenty of uh, then they can use the word lot of many abundance of right for the birds right so it can be anything which is which is in abundance next is larva's specific dash composition larva's specific dash composition now this is related to larva can be identified in birds that feed on them larva specific dash composition can be identified in birds that feed on them and then scientists will analyze what the birds include in their what the birds include in their diet in their whatever it is so you can see what the answer is going to be now i play the audio and you got to find all these answers good luck You will hear a phone conversation between two people, Kathy and John. John is hoping to volunteer at a retirement home. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to Hello, Hillary Lodge Retirement Home. Kathy speaking. Hello, my name's John Shepherd. Could I ask if you're the manager of the home? That's right. Oh, good. Hello, Kathy. A friend of mine is a volunteer at Hillary Lodge, and I'd like to help out too. If you need more people. I work part-time, so I have quite a lot of free time. 
We're always glad of more help, John. Shall I tell you about some of the activities that volunteers get involved in? Please. Well, on Monday evenings, we organise computer training. We've got six laptops, and five or six residents come to the sessions regularly. They're all now fine at writing and sending emails, but our trainer has just moved away, and we need two or three volunteers who can help the residents create documents. Just simple things, really. I'd certainly be interested in doing that. Great. Then on Tuesday afternoons, we have an informal singing class, which most of the residents attend. We've got a keyboard and someone who plays, but if you'd like to join in the singing, you'd be very welcome. I work on Tuesdays at the moment, though that might change. I'll have to give it a miss for now. I'm afraid. Okay. Then on Thursday mornings, we generally have a session in our garden. Several of our residents enjoy learning about flowers, where they grow best, how to look after them, and so on. Is that something you're keen on? I'm no expert, but I enjoy gardening. So yes, I'd like to get involved. Do you have your own tools at the home? We've got a few, but not very many. I could bring some in with me when I come. Thank you very much.、Uh, one very important thing for volunteers is that we hold a monthly meeting where they all get together with the staff. It's a chance to make sure we're working well together, and that everyone knows how the residents are and what's going on in the home. Uh huh. Now, obviously, we'd need to get to know you before you become one of our volunteers. Of course. Could you come in for an informal interview later this week, maybe? I'm busy the next couple of days, but would Saturday be possible? Certainly. Just drop in any time during the day. I won't be working then, so you'll see my assistant, Maraid. Sorry, how do you spell that? It's M A I R E A D, Maraid. Okay, got that. It's not a name I'm familiar with. Oh, it's an Irish name. She comes from Dublin. Right, and the road that Hillary Lodge is in is called Bridge Road, isn't it? That's right, number seventy-three. Fine. Oh, one other thing you might be interested in: we're holding a couple of open house days. And still need a few volunteers if you're available. What are the dates? There's one on April the ninth, and another on the fourteenth of May. They're both Saturdays, and all day events. I can certainly manage May the fourteenth. I've got another commitment on April the ninth, though. That would be a great help. We're having several guest entertainers, singers, a brass band, and so on, and we're expecting a lot of visitors. So one possibility is to help look after the entertainers, or you could spend an hour or so organising people as they arrive, and then just be part of the team, making sure everything's going smoothly. Well, shall I show people where they can park? Lovely, thank you. One reason for holding the open house days is to get publicity for Hillary Lodge locally. So you may find you have someone from a newspaper wanting to interview you. They'll want to find out from two or three people why they volunteer to help at the home. 
We're trying to get a TV station to come too, but they don't seem very interested. I don't mind being interviewed. Good. Well, if you come in for a chat, as we arranged, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much for calling. My pleasure. Goodbye. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. You will hear the head of a centre which offers evening classes for adults. She is explaining some recent changes which have been made to the centre. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Hello. As some of you know, I'm Elaine Marriott, the head of the college's Learning Resource Centre. We've invited all of you taking evening classes and leisure activities to come and see the changes we've made to the centre in the last month. One major change we've made here on the ground floor is to the layout, as you can see from looking around you. I'm sure you'll recognise the desk. That's still in the same place as it has to be just inside the door. But you'll see that there are now periodicals on the shelves in the corner behind the desk. We've brought them nearer the entrance because so many people like to come in just to read magazines. We now stock a far wider range of periodicals than we used to, so we've decided to separate them from newspapers. This means the newspapers are now just the other side of the stairs, near the study area. Now another thing is that we've brought the computers downstairs. People used to complain about having to go upstairs to use them, so they're now at the far side of the building on the right, in the corner overlooking the car park. We've now got an extra photocopier. So, as well as the one upstairs, there's one down here. You can see it right opposite the entrance, by the wall on the far side. The biggest change, though, and one I'm sure many of you will welcome, is that we now have a cafe at last. We've been asking for one for years. If you turn right, as soon as you get past the desk. You'll see the door ahead of you. It became possible to have a cafe because the building has been extended, and we've now got a new office and storeroom area. What else should I tell you about before we walk round? Oh yes, we've had so many requests for books on sport that we've bought a lot more, and they're all together immediately to the right of the entrance. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at the questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. 
OK, that's enough on the new layout. We'll walk around in a moment, but before we do, something about the people who are here to help you. Of course, all the staff will do their best to answer your questions, but now we're each going to specialise in certain areas. So, if you ask a staff member about something and they don't think they can help you enough, they'll direct you to our specialist. Jenny Reed is the person to see if there are any films you'd like us to stock, as she's taken over responsibility for purchasing those. I'd better warn you that our budget is limited, so I'm afraid we can't promise to buy everything you ask for. Phil Penshurst can help you to improve your writing if you need to produce reports for your course. You can book a half-hour session with Phil to start with. Then, if you want more help, he'll arrange follow-up sessions with you. I must mention Tom Salisbury. Many people are interested in doing research or just reading about this region. The people, occupations, changes over the years and so on. Tom is a specialist in this particular field, so if you want any help, he can point you in the right direction. We've got a large collection of relevant documents, from old maps to studies of the wildlife. We have a new member of staff, Saeed Akhtar. I'm sure you'll meet him soon and we'll find him very helpful. If you're unemployed and want some advice on the practical aspects of looking for a job, Saeed is the person to talk to. He's also written a very useful book on the subject, which of course we've got on our shelves. Many of you will know Shilpa Desai, who's been working here for about five years. Shilpa now has the additional responsibility of giving information and advice on anything to do with housing, such as finding out what's available or whether you're eligible for financial help. Right, well, that's quite enough from me. So, let's walk round the library. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. You will hear a tutor and a student discussing a project the student is working on. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Right, Stuart. Well, I've read your draft report on your work placement at the Central Museum Association. Sounds as if you had an interesting time. So you ended up making a film for them? Yeah, it was a film to train the employees in different museums in the techniques they should use for labelling ancient objects without damaging them. Some of them are really fragile. OK. So, in your report, you go through the main stages in making the film. Let's discuss that in a little more detail. You had to find a location, somewhere to shoot the film. 
That took quite a few days because I had to look at different museums all over the country, but I'd allowed time for it. And even though it was the middle of winter, there wasn't any snow, so I didn't have any transport problems. Right. Did you have to decide what equipment you'd need for the filming? Yes. I think they were quite surprised at how well I managed that. It was just the luck of the draw, actually. I'd done that project with you last year. Oh, on recording technology. So you knew a bit about it from that, right? Yeah. What I found really hard was actually writing the script. I had a deadline for that, but the association had to extend it. I couldn't have done it otherwise. Would it have helped if you'd had some training there? I think you're right. I probably needed that. Yeah. Right. Now, from your draft report, it sounds as if you had one or two problems deciding who was going to actually appear in the video. The casting. Yeah. I'd expected that the people who worked for the association would be really keen on taking part. But they weren't. <laughs> the thing was, they were all so busy. And it did mean some of them had to travel, but Janice King, who I was reporting to for the project, ah,、oh, she was great. She arranged for people to have time off and for their work to be covered, so that was a big help for me. Right, and it sounds like the filming itself went well. I gather you found a company who provided an online introduction to the techniques. Yeah, it was really informative. And very user friendly. I learned a lot from it. And then the editing. For that, the association put me in touch with someone who works for one of the big movie companies, and I went down to the studio and sat with him in front of his computer for a day, learning how to cut and paste and deal with the soundtrack and so on. So was that all? No, I didn't include this in my draft report, but I had to design the cover for the DVD as well, the lettering and everything. Have you done any of that sort of design work before? No, but I did a rough draft and then talked it through with a couple of my mates, and they gave me some more ideas. And when I'd finished it, I showed it to the people who worked at the association, and they really liked it. Excellent. Now listen and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now, as well as your own draft report, I've also received some written evaluation from the association on the work you did during your placement, and how it was of benefit to them. I notice that you haven't included anything on that in your report yet. How my project benefited the association, you mean? So, do I have to include that? Yes.、Oh, well. Um, let's think.、Um, I suppose if I hadn't made the film for them, they'd have had to get an outside company to do it. But because I was actually working for the association, I'd got much more of a feeling for what their aims are. Things like their responsibility for the conservation of the exhibits. I don't think an outside company would have had that understanding. They'd have been more detached. Right, and the association also said that because of your background, you had a good idea of where to go to get the best deal for the equipment you needed. They said the saving in expense made it worthwhile, even though sourcing it took quite a bit of time. Yes, that's true. The association also said making the film had a very positive effect in getting staff to work together more closely. Oh. I hadn't heard that. That's good, and certainly people weren't afraid to tell me what they thought about it as I was making it. So I was able to get lots of feedback at every stage. That was useful for me, but it also meant the final product worked better for them. 
Can you think of any other benefits? Well, I don't think they'd really thought out what they'd do with the film once it was made. I made quite a few suggestions for the distribution, other people we could send it to, as well as museum staff. Yes, they mentioned that. Okay, good. Well, it sounds like they certainly. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. You will hear a lecture about a species of bird called the New Caledonian crow. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. I'm going to talk today about research into a particular species of bird, the New Caledonian crow, whose natural habitat is small islands in the Pacific Ocean, and it seems that these crows are exceptionally resourceful. Using sticks or other tools to find food isn't unknown among birds and animals. Some chimpanzees, for example, are known to bang nuts on stones in order to break the shell and get at the edible kernel inside. One New Caledonian crow called Betty bent some straight wire into a hook and used it to lift a small bucket of her favourite food from a vertical pipe. This experiment was the first time she'd been presented with wire, which makes it very impressive. Another crow called Barney has demonstrated his skill at using sticks to forage for food. In one research project, scientists from New Zealand and Oxford set captive New Caledonian crows a three-stage problem. If they wanted to extract food from a hole, the crows first had to pull up a string to get a short stick, then use that short stick to remove a long stick from a toolbox. And finally, use the long stick to reach the food. Amazingly, they worked out how to do this successfully. Further experiments carried out at Oxford suggest that crows can also use sticks as tools to inspect all sorts of objects, possibly to assess whether or not they present a danger. The idea for the experiment came from observing the birds using tools to pick at random objects, such as a picture of a spider that was printed on some cloth. In this research, five pairs of crows, including Barney, underwent tests to see how they would react to a variety of objects, which were carefully chosen so the birds wouldn't be tempted to view them as a possible source of food. As a further precaution, all the crows had been fed beforehand. On eight occasions, a bird's first contact was by using a tool. In all three trials, Barney began by using a stick for inspection. One involved a rubber snake. First, he approached it, but didn't touch it. 
then retreated to pick up a stick. He then prodded it with the stick. After some more investigation, he discarded the stick and carried on pecking at the snake more confidently, apparently convinced that it wouldn't move. In other experiments, two different birds, called Pierre and Corbeau, also made a first approach with tools on three separate occasions. Pierre used a short piece of wood chip to touch a light which was flashing, and Corbeau was seen prodding a metal toad with a stick. Significantly, the crows tended to use the sticks only to make their first contact with the object. Subsequently, they either ignored the object or dropped the tool and pecked at the object, which is very different from using the tool to get access to food. So, what conclusions can be drawn from the research? Evidence is building up from experiments such as these that the birds are able to plan their actions in advance, which is very interesting for understanding their cognition. They don't seem to be responding in a pre-programmed sort of way. It may even be possible that they're able to view a problem and work out what the answer is. However, a major difficulty is assessing whether this tool-using behaviour is a sign of intelligence. To some extent, this is related to the ecological circumstances in which the animal is found. So, scientists want to find out much more about how the crows behave in their native habitat, and a team from Exeter and Oxford universities is carrying out research in New Caledonia. They're looking into whether the bird's way of searching for food gives them any possible evolutionary advantage. The birds are hard to observe, as they live in a region of mountainous forest, so the researchers have attached tiny cameras to the tails of some birds as one method of investigating their behaviour. The birds are masters at using sticks to find their food, in particular, beta larvae, from the trees. It's possible that the birds can derive so much energy from these grubs that they only need to eat a few each day. This would mean that they wouldn't have to spend most of their waking time searching for food, as most animals do. The beetle larvae have a distinct chemical makeup, which can be traced through the feathers and blood of birds that eat them. Scientists have collected samples from crows in order to estimate the proportion of larvae in their diet. They should then be able to gauge the extent to which individual birds depend on using sticks to feed themselves. We have learnt a great deal about the ability of New Caledonian crows to use tools, and some very interesting research is being carried out into them. Welcome back. So, the first thing you guys need to do, write your correct answers in the comment of this video. Okay? Yes, you must do that. Now, tell me how many answers are correct. Is there anybody who got 38 correct answers? Wow, fantastic. 38 means 8.5 bands, huh? Great, marvelous. And 35? Good. Those who are getting, who want to get 8 bands in listening or 8 triple seven, they must score 37, 38 in the practice test. Then they will be able to get 8 bands in listening in actual IELTS test. So that's all guys. Uh, I'll come back with some more listening videos. This was the last video of this series, but I'll make more videos on listening with you as well. If you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel. I also run another channel, Asad Yaqub Vlogs. You must subscribe to that channel as well. Asad Yaqub also teaches IELTS online. If you want to join Asad Yaqub's online IELTS classes, you can contact him for that. 
uh, his WhatsApp number is given over here. Okay, I wish you all the best and I wish you a fantastic bench score in your IELTS listening. I wish you 37, 38 correct answers and that will give you 8.5 bands in IELTS listening. Take good care of yourselves. Work hard to achieve your goal and Asad Yaqub is always with you. I am your well-wisher. I am your trainer. I am your teacher and I'm always going to be with you. Take good care of yourselves. Allah Hafiz.